What is up my curious craniums, it's Chris with Tabletops and Tentacles, here with a little zine rundown slash review slash overlook. I'm not actually sure what terminology I'm going to be using for these videos, but I've been getting a, quite a few uh, zine quest zines in and some new books and some other things that I just thought would be kind of fun to run through and kind of check out here on the channel. Um, I will be back with more... Uh, Kickstarter previews and Reaper stuff eventually here. I just sort of got overwhelmed with conventions and catching up on 3 Dice 6 and our other magazines and stuff that we're working on. Tabletops and Tentacles issue 3 is finally out and it's over 220 pages of cool geeky stuff that you can find in the links below if you want to check it out. I'm really happy with the way this turned out but it did kind of take me away from getting things done in the meantime. I also got a new puppy, which is why my hands have bites all over them. Uh, so the cool kids all do the RPG reviews this way, so I'm going to as well. So you get to look at my weird hands as we check out Skullbox. So I am absolutely in love with the art from Gospo on this thing, and I just think it's it immediately drew me in. It's got the Minola skull look to it. I think these were shipped by Exalted Funeral, and this was inside an envelope, an envelope inside an envelope. Inside this envelope was a sticker that's all holographic-y, shiny, shimmery, cool. A enamel pin that is pretty similarly rad. Really dig it. Not much on the back. This is from Shardstone at shardstone.net. It came with five rule or character sheets on really nice paper. Uh, this is the character sheet. It's very simple. It has two sides. There is your box type, your name, the three stats of cool, mosh, and weird. This is for notes or whatnot. There's bonus features and contraband locations on this. This is a very punk rock inspired zine. There's a lot of music references and things in it. And I really dig it. So this is Skullbox right here. It's got a really nice UV uh, shine to a couple of points on it, the title and the, the box. The image is the same one as the sticker just facing the reader's direction. It's a perfect bound little box. It's labeled raid number one, which makes me hope that there's more school box to come. Dungeons Mayhem Magic. These three words best describe Skull Box. Take on the role of sentient punk skulls who need to use psychotic traps and weird contraband to keep wannabe heroes from taking their stuff. Skull Box is a punk rock inspired zine that contains an entire rules like game designed to bring fun and absurd stories to your table. It has a unique engine at its core that can be learned in just a couple of minutes, requires only six sided dice, and is designed to be played as a fun one shot or short yet absurd game campaign and all of that is mostly accurate <laughs> so I got this for zine quest and I backed it the second I saw it because it just looked absolutely amazing um, it is perfect bound so it's gonna be a little harder to flip through but I will endeavor to do my best the art is by Gospel, writing and game design by Marquis, and layout by Dominus, and published by Shardstone Assembly. The art in this is just absolutely standout. I really like the font usage in this. Table of contents lists an introduction, playing school box, boxes, psychotic traps, raiders, coffee shrooms, the black market, and the golden apple of discord. This is a 64 page zine, I believe, 60 page zine and it is all black and white paper's really nice it's not anything too fancy but that's all you need for this kind of thing uh, so far my only real complaint about this is that a lot of the art is right in the gutter and it is actually a little hard to see at times and it bums me out because i love the art so much uh, forget about getting to the heart of the matter, let's cut right to the bone. You're a skull in a box. When you're done struggling to reacclimate yourself to the baffling reality of conscious experience, get a glass of water, remember you can't drink it, and grab a notebook, then get down to business. 
Get this, a pack of rabid heroic raiders from that candy-chewing, glitter-painting, hand-holding land of Everbliss are going to come and ransack your dungeon. They've been sent by Saint Queen Sophronia to steal your golden apple of discord. Once that's gone, there won't be any more magic in this place, which means you'll just be another dead skull six feet under. So, you hollow-hitted idiots have to find some brains between you and take these worm-lipped do-gooders out. Break enough of their bones and Everbliss will be good as gone. Yeah, it'll be pretty apocalyptic but the aftermath is secondary so long as you keep that apple safe so that is the plot of this game you are skulls in a box protecting the apple from the fairy queen and it's fantastic I love it uh, <laughs> the six plans to stomping out heroes is kindly suggested by Abaddon Her Herophant of eternal destruction two to five peer Two to five players pick out their skull's box. One player takes on the role of the big box, or BB, meaning they play all the enemies, NPCs, in the world at large. Skulls have to endure, endure three separate raids. In between each raid, there are three rounds that the skulls can use to prepare for the coming raids. The skulls pick out their psycho traps, roleplay out the prompts to make them, and put the traps in the zone of their choice. So this has a really interesting structure to it. Um, as the raids begin, they the heroes of Everbliss come to take your golden apple of discord and you will play what happens, uh, what happens when your traps are triggered, and roll dice if needed. Uh, when an adventure ends, skulls upgrade their boxes, reset and add new traps, and begin the next raid. Once the queen shows up in the third raid, you stomp her too and put the land of Everbliss into the skull box. So this is a really interesting kind of ladder style raid system where you uh, you have to repel three different waves of raiders and you play as a skull in a box and there's a bunch of different skulls in boxes. So this is how you create a character in skull box. You have a hit die, you roll that boy and that's how many hits you can take before your box breaks. If that happens, you're just a floating skull, and the only thing you can do is buzz around like flies on dung. You also have three abilities. You roll 1d6 for each one in order. Whenever you want to do something that's contested or difficult, the BB will tell you to roll a number of d6 equal to your ability score. If at least one die is a 5 or 6, you succeed on the check. So it's very simple as far as the dice is concerned. Your skills are cool. This ability is used for traps and tricks. You roll cool whenever you set down a normal trap or try to talk a beast into joining our side. For traps, extra successes can lead to psychotic bonuses described for each trap. Mosh is an ability to use for bashing and grabbing. Whenever you want to hit something real good, roll Mosh. Same if you're going to grapple them. For every success, you do one hit, but for every failure, you suffer one hit too. Weird is the ability used for making really weird things happen. Some traps require a good weird check to set up, as do some of your box's abilities. If someone uses magic on you, you roll weird to avoid being cursed or worse. Once the heroes arrive for their raid, you take turns trying to repel them. It's fairly simple. I really like the, the madness of this. I'm not going to go through all of the every detail of the bone boxes that you can choose, but they are really fantastic. So there's the bone box musician. You sing the language of the dead, start a mosh pit with all the bones, show heroes just how pointless it is to serve the man, then send everybody into a riot as your music starts crawling in their skin. So each one has uh, different upgrades that you can choose as you're playing it. You start with a feature that is, in this particular case you sing a favorite rock, punk rock chorus, then roll weird. For every success, another raider in your zone will have to spend the round headbanging. And then the upgrade features are great. There's Death Dooming Lullaby, Hot Hail and Kill, Chop Suey, Welcome to Paradise, Hell's Bells, and Angel of Death. The Bodenbach musician gets 1d4. The lich in a box is pretty great. Magic apple or no, even a skull is doomed to die someday. The uncreative ones, that is. But with this box, you've gained impossible knowledge into the absolute oblivion of all things. With your newfound mastery over life and death, it's time to show these hot-blooded heroes what happens when they face someone who's creative. So the starting one on that one is Soul Skull. You can upgrade to Power Word, Toll the Bell, Fade to Black, The Rot That Plagues All Dead Things, Platonian Ideal, Coffin, and Questioning the Enlightened Skull. We also have the Shroom Box, who is 
pretty great. Uh, at the start of each ro uh, raid, you roll weird because it's time to share that cosmic inside of yours. And you can upgrade on that one to Bad Trip, Matching Wavelengths, Fairy Ring, Death Heads, Cosmic Insight, Inner Things, and Hero Dose. There's the Stygian Jugger Box. <laughs> the art in this one is particularly great. It's just absolutely fantastic. I love the the labyrinth style goblin heroes in all of these. Traps and weird stuff are cool and all, but there's nothing quite as fun as bashing raiders. You, being the bright skull that you are, quickly figured out that bashing is also best done from the biggest, bulkiest, meanest box you can find. The fact that it has a cool name was just a secondary plus, as far as you could tell. Your starting box feature on that one is Gladiator Crowd. You can upgrade to your Pancake, Cubic Black Hole, or Seismic Toss. They actually have a 1d6 plus 1, so they, all ha they have quite a bit more life than the previous ones so far. The Tinder Box. You set your box on fire. Accident? Maybe. And yes, setting traps is difficult when you only have jawbones to work with, and it'd be rad if everyone else could just accept that and vibe out. Regardless, you're on fire, and it's time to make the best of a bad situation. Your starting box feature is Fire Starter. You have a 1d6 plus 1, and you can upgrade to Pyromaniacs R Us, Set the Fire Alarms Off, and Pyre Box. Now we move into Psychotic Traps. Basically, what you do here is you you have a map, and they walk you through how to make a map here if you're the BB, the big box, and you basically throw a bunch of D6s onto the table, and those create zones that are entrances and exits from the dungeon. One of the zones has the golden apple of discord, and then the skull and the BBs take turns describing what each zone looks like so that you kind of create the map in a collaborative fashion as you're playing. Then for psychotic traps, which you can place and create in between raids, you flip through, you pick what trap you want to play. Then there's a role play prompt at the beginning of each of these to play through the creation of the trap. So it's not just, oh, I'm going to play doppelganger mosh pit. You actually role play out the process of building and setting that trap. If you don't get done before the raid starts, you're out of luck and it's not set and ready to rock and roll. Uh, you can also update traps by rolling cool to add new demented upgrades, or you can build more traps as long as you have enough rounds to do so. There's a trap table that lets you roll randomly if you can't decide. It has eight on it with the disclaimer that says, what's that? We said you only needed six-sided dice. Too bad, suckers. I love the sense of humor in this. Uh, there's the Beast in a Box, Black Speech Gramophone, Conjured Cthulhu Constrictor, Doppelganger Mosh Pit, Neil Arrows, Room Within a Room Within a Room Within a Room Within a Spitfire Geysers, and Starved Cannibal on a Leash. We got pictures for each one. There's descriptions on it. So for instance, with Beast in a Box, the roleplay prompt is that your skulls have tracked down the beast you want. Now you just gotta figure out how to get it into the box without it running away again. So you roll on this table to find out what your beast is. Then um, when a raider enters, they open the box to see what's inside and you hear what happens next. So it's kind of a fun way of creating these little extra traps involved with the raids. And I really like the, the whole roleplay prompt that you play out in the in-between sections here. The psychotic bonuses are all really fun. Uh, like in this particular case, you can add extra successes to it, to the black speech gramophone. Uh, there's the conjured Cthulhu constrictor. And on that particular one, you choose the most obscure recipe you can think of and role play out with the other skulls how making that recipe was actually a ritual to summon the tentacles of Cthulhu. If you need suggestions, the pink hairs of a mohawked werewolf, a couple of drops of ever blissian tears, and the human skin-bound necronomicon found beneath the sea ought to do the trick. So it's really fun. I, this, I just love the writing and art in this. They go along together very well. We have the doppelganger mosh pit. We've got the nail arrows. Uh, we've got a room within a room within a room within a room within a room. We've got Spitfire Geysers. And Starved Cannibal on a Leash. No, yeah, this one is exactly what you think it is. <laughs> 
As far as raiders are concerned, they are exactly the kind of no-good thieves you'd expect them to be. Sanctimonious heroes, beasts, only in it for themselves, all with the greater calling, which at the end of the day is just a calling to take whatever they want. So Skulls, here's how it's going to go down. The first wave has a number of raiders equal to the Skulls plus one. The second wave has a number of raiders equal to the Skulls plus two. And then the third and final wave has the Saint Queen Sophronia herself, along with a number of raiders equal to the Skulls. If you can cross that finish line, Ever Bliss goes into the Skull Box. So each raider has a different setup here. They have a threat number indicating how many hits it needs to be taken down. It has a 1d6 table of abilities. There's also beast options on here, and those ones are kind of cool because you can reduce their hit points to zero and convince them to join the crew, which is kind of fun. Um, also, the BB needs to make sure you skulls follow the raid flow. You describe the raiders entering a zone, give the boxes in that zone a chance to do whatever it is they want to do. The raiders respond to what the boxes do, interact with the zone, and if nothing's stopping them, they move on to the next. If the raiders get to the golden apple of discord and manage to take it out of the dungeon, it's game over. Every skull flatlines and Everbliss will never know what it means to suffer. So I love that this is just at its heart a reverse old school dungeon crawl where you are trying to prevent the raiders from getting to the treasure in it. We've got a number of different ones. There are two fighters, the berserker and the knight. The magic users, the shaman and the warlock the Thieves, the Lurker, and the Phantom, and Beasts, the Cube Slime, the Irish Elk, the Tunneling Yahasuri, and the Wack Wack. There's also the boss herself, the Saint Queen Sephronia. She has eight life. Most of the other ones have between one and three, depending on the, on the creature we're looking at here. In the case of these, like, so the Knight has an Act of Terror, and their one to two is a Calvary Charge. 3 to 4 is an Everbliss Chivalry, and 5 to 6 is Everbliss Blade Dancing. And each of those does different things, depending on what it is. They do different types of damage or different amounts of damage. And I, I do dig the, the variety here. The boss in particular has six different acts of terror that she can met out. Uh, she's been called the biggest musical talent of the generation. Her music has literally caused crusades against the darkness, overthrown tyrants, and brought peace and joy to everyone that's ever heard it. Everyone but us skulls. In reality, Saint Queen Sophronia is a coffee mushroom addict and uses her control over the fields to make sure everyone does what she wants. Like the wise love to say, either die a punk or live long enough to sell yourself to the establishment. Worst of all, Sophronia wants our golden apple of discord to make sure that her precious little empire never falls. So I love the the really, like there's minimal world building in here, but there is a very thorough world that's been built here, including coffee mushrooms. <laughs> so these are giant mushrooms and the true reason for Everbliss's success. Growing both small and large are the coffee shrooms that are absolutely filled to the brim with the magical essence of their namesake. They surround Everbliss, keep the populace toiling away, initiate world peace, and serve as a useful method for some raider to learn magic they ought not to know. That being said, if they're going to be used against you, you might as well use them yourself, too. So it's kind of fun. There's a role-playing prompt on this that you can actually, as boxes, sneak out into the fields and snag some mushrooms. And then depending on how all of that goes, it dictates how many mushrooms you end up stealing. And you can only do them in between raids, which also eats up time that you could have otherwise used for traps. Uh, the mushrooms themselves are kind of cool. Uh, for skulls, it's a little different compared to everyone else. You can eat one of these little miracles, but if you do, all that will happen is that your teeth will stain, at least at first. The turn after you eat a coffee shroom, they hit. A skull will vibrate like it's a toy on the highest setting and begin to see geometries that aren't there. Then they'll get really, really, really focused. While under the effects of a coffee shroom, any dice you roll succeed on a four or higher. That's a heck of a bonus, right? But in the end of the raid, there comes the crash, and you ain't likely to get an afterglow either. A skull who eats coffee shrooms cannot participate in building traps, upgrading them, or buying Everbliss contraband until the next raid is over. You gotta sleep those sins off, man. So it's a really interesting bonus that is 
debatably helpful depending on how good you are rolling. Um, but I do like that it's got the, the hangover sequence afterwards as well. There's also the black market, which is contraband, and the BB takes on the role of Foxbite, the contraband dealer. There's a whole list of stuff that they can get from him, including including the guitar of the Reverend Reaver, Molotov cocktail, a thorn wrapped skull ball bat, and a white lighter 27 club entrance ticket. Each of these are really fun. I dig the little aspect to them. And then finally, there's the Golden Apple of Discord itself. This is the grandpappy of all chaos. Legend tells that it grew from a tree that was once the spear of some ancient war god that was thrust into the earth to punish it for some long-forgotten musical sin. So the apple's really fun. Um, if you... It's a last resort type thing where if you're the last skull box alive, you run and take a bite of it. And each round, it manifests a different version of these boxes around you, only it's gold. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of a fun, like, last Hail Mary to surviving. If the Saint Queen gets her filthy hands on the golden apple, she'll use the establishment's vast array of contacts to master its unmasterable powers. She'll gain access to every voice that's ever sung and the skulls of every musician that's ever played. With such impossible talents, she'll take over the world with her record label and that'll be the end of Skull Unlife as we know it. So don't let her get the apple and if it comes down to it, eat the thing if you have to. It's pretty great. I really dig this. I think it's cute. I think it's fun. It's a little silly. Okay, maybe it's a lot silly, but it's silly in the most perfect way. And I'm really excited about getting some crazy people to the table and playing Skullbox from Shardstone.net. Uh, I backed this on Kickstarter, but I do believe that the book itself is available on the website, and I will put links to all of that, as well as where you can find Shardstone, Gospo, Marquee, and Dominus online. And as always, if you'd like to support our channel, you can hit like and subscribe. That helps the channel. You can go to the links below to pick up a copy of Tabletops and Tentacles Issue 3, our cryptid special. Or you can join us on Patreon. That helps more of these videos get made. It helps me continue to produce our magazine and our other mad projects that we're working on. Now, if you like this type of video, let me know. I would love to do more of these. I just don't know if there's a lot of market for somebody watching me flip through things and talk. So if you like it, please hit like or leave a comment below and we'll do some more of these. I have a ton of really cool zines hanging out here. As always, thanks for watching. May you live in interesting times.